Hey everybody, Steve here. Uh, this video is for YouTuber Mr. Fellowship. We've been having a little bit of a discussion on the video I posted, the open rebuke to Vincent Xavier, false prophet of the New Wine Ministry. And just a little slight background on that. Basically, uh, what happened is Vincent Xavier gave a prophecy from God 100%, thus saith the Lord, that by the end of October, uh, 2009, Washington, D.C. would be destroyed by a nuclear device, an underground nuclear device. Now, one stone would be left on top of another. There is no ifs, ands, or but. It's not if they repent, I'll relent. It was this is going to happen because the next step is going to be the ushering in of the end times and uh, Armageddon and, you know, revival and, and all that kinds of stuff. Unfortunately, that didn't come to pass. Even the few dates that uh, Vincent Xavier gave didn't come to pass. And we know that Scripture says in the Old Testament, if a prophet comes about, gives a prophecy, and that thing does not come to pass, you're out, you, you don't have to fear that person. And the reason I did those videos on Vincent Xavier is because I saw the false teaching. I compared it with God's Word and needed to put this out to say, look, the proof of a false teacher, one of the evidence or the byproducts of that is false prophecies. If they continue on, they keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny and they keep making prophecies and never repent and confess. Uh, Mr. Fellowship, he comes on and he says, you're right, but that does not nullify people like Earthquake Kelly, Perry Stone, David Wilkinson, Mike Bickle, Dimitri Dudeman. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael Scherer, Paul Williams, Jane's Defense Report, and Hamid Mir, who all say we're going to get hit by a nuclear bomb and soon. Well, the problem is, is a prophecy is when a, a prophet is somebody who gets something from God and says, Thus saith the Lord. God says that this is going to happen on this specific time and date, and that's what God said. The problem is there's some people, and it, it always comes to pass. The Bible says that. It's extremely clear. Um, if it doesn't come to pass, that person is a false prophet. And if it happens again and again and again, then you really know that they're a false prophet. Now, the punishment for false prophecies in the Old Testament was having them stoned to death. Now, of course, we don't do that as New Testament believers today. Uh, while the punishment... Jesus expounded on the law, and he says, If you, thou shalt not kill, or thou shalt not murder. But if you hate your brother in your mind, you've already killed him. Uh, if you committed adultery physically in the Old Testament, physically, yes, you've sinned. But he said, if, if you think it you've in your mind, you've already committed adultery, and that's a sin. So the punishment for false prophets and false teachers isn't stoning or killing them, because our, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the Spirit and, and all that stuff. But rather, we are to uh, confront with the truth of God's word. Rather, we're supposed to expose them if they don't repent and confess and go back to the narrow road of salvation. Uh, and if they continue on with their false teaching or their false prophecies, then we are to have nothing to do with them. And we're supposed to warn others so they don't fall into the same sin. And sin separates us from God. Uh, the problem is... <clears throat> As I responded uh, to that comment, I said, Some of the people you have listed have given prophecies that have not come to pass, nor have they repented of them. Some have given multiple false prophecies. Be careful who you support and follow. Again, it doesn't matter because our citizenship is in heaven, and it, it, if a nuclear bomb comes, does that really bother me? God's word says, Don't fear the one who can kill the body, but the one who can damn the soul to hell. Uh, he replies back and he says, I know and you might be right about that they should repent. Wilkerson had said that he was wrong. I think back in 2000, but when 9-11 happened, most people would have said, look, see, there's a thousand fires. And uh, most people would not have argued with him and said, wow, you're a great man of God. Uh, what he said had just happened. But Wilkerson said, no, this is not what I saw. What I saw was much worse. So I'd like to know your thoughts on Wilkerson. In response to this... This is a two-part response because, one, first you say, Mr. Fellowship, I know, and you might be right about that they should repent. Now, <clears throat> let me just read you my response. Might be right about that they should repent. Scripture is extremely clear about repenting, asking forgiveness from God, the brethren, false prophecy, false teaching, etc. There is no might about it. Some people on your list are bragging about their fellow prophets having a 10% success rate. 
But scripture shows that is not success in God's eyes. It's 100% or nothing, repent or perish. Seems like more testing against scripture is needed, and that's all I have to say. Um, then he comes back. I got, uh, wasn't able to post another one. He says, you did not answer my question about Wilkerson. Uh, in the 90s, he said he saw the thousand fires and all that stuff. Well, and he com Then he comes out and says that this isn't what I saw, but it's much worse. I'm sorry, but a false prophet would take credit and say, yes, I was right. Now, Wilkerson, he said no. But now Wilkerson said what he saw is about to happen. What we need to look at uh, really is what is a prophecy. When we, look, when we look at God's word, what we see for a prophecy from God is a specific event, a, speci a specific detailed end date or time of which it's going to happen. And then, of course, thus saith the Lord, or God said, boom, this will happen. Um, let's go, I want to go over some prophecies by, some so-called prophecies by David Wilkerson. No more gospel TV, on TV by 1999. Now he preached this in the Solomon Church in December of 1994. Now, quote unquote, David Wilkerson said, right now I sense in my spirit that in less than five years there will be no more so-called gospel television networks. They will all fall into bankruptcy and absolute ruin. And that was December 12th of 1994. Do we see a, an event? Yes, we see an event of no more gospel TV. Whether good or bad, they're all going to be in ruins and they're all going to go bankrupt. Is there a time frame uh, within five years? Kind of a loose time frame, but there is a, a time set, an ending date. Um, is there, thus saith the Lord, or God said? No, we don't see that. He says, right now I sense in my spirit. So in other words, we, this is not a prophecy, but this is something where he thinks might happen. Uh, there is a sense of impending doom. Now, whether that's from God or whether that's uh, from his, based on his own fear or by looking at the, the current situation, uh, maybe, that, maybe he got that sense from the media. But the problem is, if you understand how um, <clears throat> the enemy works, to get as many deceived believers on that wide road to destruction, he's going to use every available tool, and that's going to include gospel television. Uh, now, there's some gospel TV out there that are doing a great job. However, there's a lot that are not. But to say that they will all fall into bankruptcy and absolute, absolute ruin, uh, that never came to pass. Now, does that qualify as a prophecy? I don't think so, because he doesn't say that, thus saith the Lord, or God told me to say this. Uh, another one prophecy that he gave was the financial crash in 2000. On April 15th, the year 2000, he said, quote, unquote, the last two years I've been crying around aloud, warning all who would hear that America is receiving her last call and judgment is at the door. I did not say this was the end of the nation, but a last call before a financial crash. I'm writing you this letter on Saturday, April 15, 2000. Yesterday's headlines, Black Friday, biggest one-day drop in history. Dow fell 618 points. NASDAQ fell 355. I don't know what is coming in the next 60 days. If the market bounces back, I can assure you it will be temporary. The crash is inevitable. Nothing can stop it. Uh, again, what do we see? Uh, May 2, 22nd was posted record highs. But then he did come back and say in prayer, I've told the Lord I'm ready at any time to confess I'm wrong. I must have spoken from my own fears or that I've spoken unadvisedly. Recently, when the market reached record highs, I wondered if those calling me a false prophet were right. What we see here is him saying that, again, there is no thus saith the Lord. It's more of his sense and his fears and what he thinks from the situations around us. Um, if you keep bouncing checks, yeah, they're going to close your account. And I think that's what the United States is doing. But I don't think that qualifies as a prophecy, but I think he needs to be more careful in regards to what he's saying, of what he senses and feels, uh, and how people are taking this and saying, well, this is a prophecy from God. Um, again, if we look at scripture and test everything, for something like this, prophecies like this, I would hold this off at arm's distance and say, you know, you sense this, you feel this, I'm just going to kind of leave it at that and I'll stick with God and his word and we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll continue this in on, on part two and uh, we'll talk about those thousand fires.